So on my Sync 3, I have my fact reverse camera. I also, through my roster expansion module, I have programmable front camera plus HDMI mirror link. So there's my front camera, which I have, which I programmed. That thing is really cool and working really well. But now, I'm going to take it a step further and I'm going to add my directional. So when I hit my directional and the screen goes blue, today that blue image is going to be it's not exactly pre-wired for the 360 observation system however it does have the knockout panels which are designed for where the factory locations are where you can and this also has the motorized mirrors and the lights and all that stuff so this is where I'm gonna put my camera and one really cool thing I like about these cameras is it's kind of like, I saw this on a Toyota Sienna, I thought that was so cool. When you hit the left directional that you see the camera on the left side of your vehicle on the screen in, in the car, this is actually going to do that. And that's not a factory Ford option. Total bonus. In order to pull this job off, this whole door panel is going to have to come off. Of course, this panel here is coming off. Through this door boot, I'm going to have to trace and run my, I'm have to run my wires through here into there. Believe it or not, no one on this entire internet, the whole World Wide Web has done this job before. So this is the first of the first. Once again, this here is the camera that I'm going to be installing. This here is a little knockout panel. There's a reference of size and how it's going to lay out before I install it. So with the driver dash, drop down here you can see these are my pre-wires I have white for my left right right for my right camera and I have power and ground now these signals get hot when the directionals are applied and the module just does that for me automatically and what's good about that is boom look at this camera color to color actually you can't beat that here's my video male goes into the female and over here I have two quick disconnects so that way when I put this into this panel I can leave all the extra slack of the wires. So God forbid if this camera ever dies, I never want to pull this door, God forsaken door apart again. So I can just simply go boop, boop, unplug these two, replace the camera, boom. You got to think like that when you're doing a job like this. This is a beast of a job I'm doing here today. The first thing we want to do is we want to start taking this door apart. I'm going to begin up here, take a plastic panel puller, or you can use a hook tool and just gently pry this out. Pull it straight see that there's four clips in there that are holding that to this. You keep all your parts in a nice little location because when you come back to find them, you don't want to be searching. The first three screws you're going to have, you got a 7 mil right here, which I'm going to get out, and then there's two underneath the door panel. You got one right here, one right here, so we'll start taking those three out and then we'll do the next ones in the center area. My next order of business is to get the bolts out of here. There's three pieces of plastic. There's like a black one that goes here. It's got a line. And it's got another one like a rectangle. And there's another one on top. Just go in there and get it right on the corner. I'm using a hook tool because it just works so damn well. And it helps to know what you're looking for. But there's two tabs that kind of like hold it down in the bottom. And there's two. So if you pull the pressure this way, you'll kind of see this on the back side. And inside there, you got two more bolts which you're going to have to remove and I can also see you got a piece of linkage you're going to have to remove when the door panel is off. I'll show you that in a second. Now lastly we need to get this cover off because there's going to be two screws holding this into the door panel. If you look in there you'll see this little slot and it works just so perfect for my big super ultra leverage flat screwdriver. I just want to kind of pry that as you get in, move up a little bit, hold it so that way it doesn't go boing. Hear that click, which means that's good. Get that out, and a whole bunch of clips in there, and there's your two 8 mils. Once that's done, I'm going to pull this door panel off with the clips that's holding it to the aluminum door panel. Now, to remove the door panel, you just want to get your hand underneath there and pull gently. Lift it up and away. 
there was a few clips behind my door panel that I had to remove to get the panel actually off. So when you actually get to the door linkage, all you have to do is just pull this thing gently and slide it right down. That's all there is to it. Just a gentle little tug. These have little clips. You push them, depress them, pull them back. Same thing goes for here. And over here for my speaker. Same kind of deal. Squeeze it, compress it, pull it back. I took the four seven mils out of here because I had to access the door boot to get my wires through the door. Speaking of the wires through the door, I took a big screwdriver right here and I just taped some um, scrap cable on there. I poked it through this grommet. If you go straight, you're going to hit a bump there. Go on an angle just like that and you can actually see it. It's right there on the other side. On this next step of wiring the system into the cab of the vehicle, I want to make a disclaimer because this for me was not really a challenge because I'm used to cutting up cars and putting things where they don't belong. But for the average novice or the amateur or someone who's not quite as skilled as you might need to be with this part of the job, let me explain what I saw, how I did what I did, and if this is going to be for you or not. I mean, you can see there's all this metal aluminum everywhere because I did a ton of drilling. And here's why I did all this drilling. Okay, this here boot, when you pull it through, it squeezes and it makes more sense to just push it back into the door. However, I need to get my wires through the boot, inside the boot, not outside of the boot, because that would be ghetto, right? So this side I pushed in, I just pulled it back out for reference. And when you unplug these two plugs, you can just do that to access, make it a little bit easier to work. And I'll explain to you what happens. Typically in a plug, you'll find that there'll be spare areas to run your wires. Now you can see in mine, there is not literally one extra spot for any damn thing, okay? And I don't need just one. I need the coaxial cable for the RCA and the center conductor, the shield, plus I have power and ground for my camera. So that's four. I don't have one. So I'm going to actually leave this thing alone. When I pulled this apart, the plugs were so similar, I just labeled them color to color so that way I can discern which one is which. And I also disconnected my negative part of my battery just to be safe. So I'm going to plug all these things back together. I'm going to put them back the way they were, factory stock. I'm not going to mess with them at all. Make, make that totally clear. So you got to say, well, how are you going to run your wires through? Okay, let me show you. I actually drilled two holes, which I'm going to put my own grommets in there. I'm going to feed my cables through. Partially, they're going to come around the outside of the factory loom, and they're going to go in through it and then pop out again through the bottom into my other factory grommet into my aftermarket grommet. So it's going to be... Pretty much the same. When you look at it, you won't notice that I was even here. And that's the way it's going to be. It'll be weatherproof. It'll be watertight and the rest. But this is just the long way of doing the job. But unfortunately, in this case, it's the only way. So once I plug this thing back in there and everything, right below here, let me push these in the hole real quick so I can show you. Right down here, I don't know if you can't be able to see it, but I drilled a hole. All right, so I started it with like a quarter inch and I finished it off with this unibit. In the kick pad on the driver's area, right up in here, if you move this thing out, you can see right there, that's the hole that I accessed. The factory plugs right up there, my hole comes in right here. Now, one word of caution. When you do drill, the first drill is not a big deal once you pop through, but when you're using the unibit and you're stepping it up, be very careful because you can hit the edge of the door. So make sure that you turn your door in to open it, to access it, so you can get the, the play to get your bit to be so wide to actually get it through there and maneuver it and make your hole large enough for what you need it to be. Down here, however, again, here's the boot. I put that back in there. Here's my new hole. This is double aluminum, so you're going to want to drill one th um, pilot bit through there, and then you're going to want to open it up again with the unit bit. Be very careful. Make sure that everything's clear. You're not hitting anything. That's why I took the door boot out and I placed it and I pushed it away. Why it's hard tentatively until I can complete my hole with the drill. Then I put it back the way it was stock. You can see there's a whole boat. Oh my God, all this metal. What a mess. It's everywhere. Ugh. Anyway, it won't look so hideous once I blow it all off with the air compressor. Aluminum up and put the grommets and tape it up and everything. You won't even, it'll look gorgeous when I'm done. But right now, I just want to make that clear. I mean, this is... It's a little bit of work. It's not for everybody. Now that my holes are created and I got my wiring prepared, now I got my two holes made and ready to run my loom over through there. I dropped down this dash. I took my, own, my trigger leads, which are from 
the Rostra camera switching module for directional and ground. I have my two RCAs, white for left, red for right. I have them partially loomed up, ready to go for the red one to go to the right side. And I have my white going over here to the left. So I got it loomed up and dropped down. I got the two through the hole, as you can see right over here. Hopefully it's tight. I know it's tight in there. So I'm just going to take these and I'm going to pull these through, as you can see. The idea is when I pull them through, it should get tight because the loom should be there now. And you want to pull it through with the wire loom protecting the sides of the wire loom on the outside of the wire. So when I pull it through, it's going to pull the wire loom and no wire will be touching the side of the body of the vehicle. It's super important. Okay, so I got this side coming out of the cabin, ran out, loomed and ready to go, totally insulated with electrical tape, and I have the excess on the door panel side, so I got it through my hole. It's gonna take this, right, pull it out. And the same thing's gonna happen. You're gonna see right here, all those roll wires are not going to be touching my aluminum door at all. They're coming through that insulated loom. And you ain't going to see anything. So I can pull it because i got a little extra slack on this side. When I sew this all up and I put back on the factory tie, that's going to be behind here. Boom, that's going to go down through the grommet, through the insulated loom, which is totally watertight. Behind here, straight down. Nothing will be seen or come out underneath this one, through the loom, and again, through the grommet, using rubber butyl to seal it through the door. And I'm going up right here to my side view mirror. One small quick tip I like to share before I close this door up is when you put this top connector side back into the cabin, put this on and get it locked around this clip here and put the, the factory wire tie back on there if you're using the old one if you're putting a new one on there. You always just push it right back in and it'll click in from the factory. So that's not going to be the problem. But the hard part is getting this to stay on this. So do this and then click it in and move ahead. So here's my wire in my, coming out of my cabin into my door boot completed. You see I got the factory wire tie placement here going down. I have another one behind it going down again on the factory location before it terminates and goes through the grommet back into the door where I have my wires ready to go to come up. One more little tip, when I ran my wires through the door and I came down, I noticed that I could have went on the inside and went back up, but I realized also there's another grommet here with all the switching for the power locks, mirrors, and seats and everything. So why not use it, right? I mean, if the factory has it there, they have it for a reason. They actually have more engineering experience than me, so. I'm gonna continue along with this and in I get to do the fun part, finally, mount my camera. All right. So here's a quick look at what my wire run inside the door looks like. It's just going there, up behind there, up, around, and it's going right in there. Now, when you're ready to pull your wire through this area, up in here, just take your camera, obviously get it drilled out and mounted so that way it's ready to pop in there and adjust when you're ready to do so. Tie your wires back onto the screwdriver or whatever. I'm using a hand file, I think. There it is on the other side. Go through the foam so that way, again, you're protecting your wires at all times. And just gently pull it through. So I have my camera here with some extra slack so I can adjust it. And inside here is my power on my RCA for my video feed. And here's where I'm going to connect it. I'm actually going to bundle it up and leave it back here because there's lots of area. And like I said, for service down the road, because this is not a factory Ford part that's just going to pop in. I'm just going to leave all this right here. So in case I ever have to replace a part, it's so easy. I just have to pull up this panel from the inside and five minutes later. So it looks like we're finally at that ultra fun part where we get to shut the door, get in, turn the AC on, and hit that left directional and watch this thing in action. All right, here goes nothing. Whew, man, it's hot today. There's a camera. It's it's not all the way in. It'll be a little bit more flush when I, when I pop it in there fully though. Okay, got all my settings turned on. I have for front camera on for motion. It's off. Just triggered by the Siri button. I got rear automatic on the rear there. Just to show you, I'll do the front anyway. A little 
back here to do camera. Boom, there's my front camera. Turn that thing right off there. Boop. Now, watch this. Hit my left directional. Oh. I didn't get that. Could you try again? Yeah, you don't get a lot of things, but anyway. Open up the door. There's my directional camera. Directional off. Radio back. And we are on the way. Let's see that one more time before I get back to work. Makes it all worth more while to all this work. Here's that first camera installed. Right up in there. Look at that. Can't even hardly see it from the side. Look at that. Can't it's much better than that. So that about wraps it up. That's how you do these side view cameras on these Ford F-150s. This one is a pleasure. This left side now is completely done. I'm not going to do the right side because this video would take literally forever and it would be twice as long as it needs to be. However, that is how it works. That's pretty much how it's all done. If you have any questions about doing your own F-150 or if I missed something, which I'm sure I've missed something because there's a lot here to talk about, shoot me a message and I hope you liked the video. If you like it, please give me a like and if you didn't like it, then you know what? Give me a like anyway. I'll see you.